God. Hallelujah. 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 We may look up to the Messiah. The power of God. You know, John said, I ain't be baptized you with water under repentance. But he come out to me as mighty as I. Who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. In the great outpourings of the Holy Ghost, it was in the form of fire. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. Praise God. It will only be in the form of fire. And it's just a little fire, but it will be a little. Praise God. There has been times in the potential top of the buildings has been great flames of fire shooting up. Now praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When that is, there's a Holy Ghost in that house. There's a Jesus walking them aisles. There is God have come down and to be in the midst of us. Hallelujah to God to let us know that he's getting ready to do the final thing on the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray that the Holy Ghost gets us. Amen. Yes. And not we have the Holy Ghost. What you got, you might use it. But if the Holy Ghost has got you, he's going to use you. And somebody said, why can't God get it out of us? God said, it's not, it's not my a problem to get it out of them. It's my problem to get it in them. If you don't have nothing in you, God can't bring nothing out. But if there's something in you, but God's going to bring it out. He won't have to worry about it. You're going to lose it. You're going to turn and lose it. You're going to allow the lose it. You're going to allow for the flow of the Holy Ghost to move like it says. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way tonight, Lord God. We praise your holy Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Praise have God. your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. You, Lord Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you read in the Bible, but we're... Uh, when Hezekiah was going against the battle and they prayed and the, uh, the prophet of God told him to, what to do to just send singers before him and let them sing praise the Lord for his good for his mercy endures forever and he it's something that you die and the Lord said to him stand this is not your battle but it's my battle praise God when they went out praising the Lord their enemies got confused and they uh, won a uh, and after they whipped them, then they turned around fighting one another. Praise God, wouldn't it be bad today to see some of our enemies get mad at one another and just killing one another? Amen. Praise Amen. God, let us have Amen. something to, uh, to upset the devil to confuse him. He don't know which way to turn. Praise God, we need a Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost revival sent down from heaven. Hallelujah, let God not come in a briefcase with some evangelists. We need something when evangelists come, let him go away a different than he come. Let him go away with power. Send him my man, I'm going to do more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John de Lorobo, Hosanda, Hallelujah to God, the clouds are already blackening up. Hallelujah to God, the thunder of God's glory. It's to begin to higher, to begin to roar. Praise God, we're going to see the lightning begin to flash. We're going to see the glory begin to return back into the house. Hallelujah to God, you're going to see people coming through the doors and saying, I got to do something. Something is calling me, something is pulling me. I've got to repair, praise God, they'll come running down your house. Make it my thunder, hey, 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 h
is alive and well. Praise the Lord. This is not going to be a revival to magnify men, but it's going to magnify the man. Jesus Christ, he's still going to walk again in the midst of the golden candlestick. We want to be a revival. Hallelujah to God. The seven churches was had a golden candlestick. The seven churches had a golden candlestick. Hallelujah to God. And Jesus walked in the midst of the golden candlestick. What was that golden concealable? He was a church. Hallelujah. That was born in the fire. Thank God Jesus walked in the midst of them. And if he's walking in the midst of us tonight, all we have to do is lay hands on the people. And the healer will walk up and lay his big hand on them. And they'll go out healed by the power of God. Hallelujah to God. Jesus is the healer. Praise the Lord. He said lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I was listening to one brother Allen's meetings one night. I had one night on the CD. Hallelujah to God. On the DVD. Hallelujah to God. He said, Hallelujah to God. He walked off the platform to lay hands on a person that was dying with cancer. And when you laid hands on them, they come out and they're shouting and praising God. And there was another woman come out the back. Said, I had a big garter. And said, Brother Allen, when you walked off the platform, one day he said, there was another man called the white walked down. And he said, when he laid his hands on that woman, she jumped up. And she said, my daughter is gone. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe you're going to see things that won't be too much laying on our hands. I bet the healer is going to walk the aisles. Hallelujah to God. And people are just going to jump up and say, I'm healed. I've been blind. I can now see. I've been deaf and dumb. Now I can talk and I can hear. I had cancer, but it's gone. I had a big garter and it's gone. I had a big tumor and it's gone. I couldn't walk. I had to Arthritis is gone. Hallelujah. Why is it gone? The healer's in the house. I said the healer will be in the house. And the healer is named Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to the Bahamut. Jesus, we give you glory. We need the Lord. Luda sike kumo mo hushanda. Hallelujah. Jesus said, "When I be lifted up, He said, I draw all men unto me. How do you lift them up?" I believe when we begin to praise Him in the Spirit, begin to lift Him up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God exalting Him and magnifying Him. Praise God. It won't be long. He's going to let you know that there's something there. Hallelujah. That desired to be there for so long. And that it's coming. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And while we have sought Jesus lifted him up, and Jesus said, I'll be lifted up, the Holy Ghost is going to start moving up down the road, all over the county. And he'll go into a home and said, You need to go and get saved. Why do I need to get saved? I said, He'll say, It's your time to get saved. And they'll come and fall in 
an altar and believe him. And they'll cry out to God. He'll deliver them from drugs. He'll deliver them from alcohol. He'll deliver them from every abundance that they're in. I said he'll deliver them, praise God. And they walk out free. They'll never go back and under that bondage anymore. Why? Because there's somebody that's enthroned in that heart of his. Praise God. There's something inside of him that's greater than drugs, greater than alcohol, greater than perversion. It's greater than anything the devil has to offer. Hallelujah to God. It's the one of the world. Hey, Jesus, he come to heal. He come to deliver. He come to save. He come to set free. He come to be our Savior and our Redeemer. And our Lord.
the verses I'm going to be sharing with you, these are relating to us information on the three mighty men with David. And are, uh, they're rise to be the three mighty leader, leading men in David's army. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We'll begin with verse 12. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And this is the number of the mighty men whom David had. Jeshabiam and, uh, and Hakmanite, the chief of the captains. He lifted up his spear against 300 slain by him at one time. I want you to think about that for just a minute. Here's one man slays 300 men at one time. You must think, as I, I was reading these and thinking about these, I thought, what a mighty man he must have been to slay 300 men at one time. At one time. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. The second one, and after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ohohite, who was one of the three mighties. Now, this Eleazar in the... Uh, Hebrew, it's just pronounced Eleazar. Eleazar. But in our English version, it's Eleazar. Hallelujah. He was the son of Dodo, the Ahohai, who was one of the three mighties. He was with David at Pass Damnum, and there the Philistines were gathered together to battle, where was a parcel of ground full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. Now this man was the one that was with David when David fought Goliath. Hallelujah. This was called, when David slew Goliath, it was, uh, today it's called Pastamum, and it means bloody strip. But at the time that they were, he was fighting the Philistines, it had a different name. Hallelujah. And so, Eleazar, or Eleazar, was with David at this place. When this battle was to take place, there was a field that was full of barley, and the people of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and David came, and he killed Goliath, as well as saved Israel's army. Now, through a battle with the Philistines, Saul and his sons are dead. And Saul died for two reasons. His transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And second, for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. So you see, it doesn't pay to not do what God says. When God tells you something, do what he says. Do what he says. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't fail to do what God says when he tells you to do something. You see, that's, that's what happened with Saul. Saul sort of began to get lifted up, and instead of waiting on Samuel the prophet to come, then he went ahead and did it himself, which was not according to the way it should have been done. And so when, when, uh, when the prophet came and he asked him, he said, what have you done? What have you done? You see. And so he was told then that God was going to take the kingdom from it would not go on through his descendants. But God is was taking the kingdom out away from him. Hallelujah. So then Saul had to pay the price eventually. And other things transpired in Saul's life. And when the prophet died, you know, he went to a, a, I would call it a wizard or whatever you want to call it. But he went to this person and asked them to inquire of it, to find out information for him from the prophet. And so instead of going to God and asking God about it, he went to this person who dealt in familiar spirits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you today, people, stay away from people that tell you they can read your horoscope. Stay away from Amen. people that tell you they can read your future in a teacup because all Amen. that has to do with familiar spirits. So stay away from things like that. Hallelujah. In First Chronicle 11, uh, 10 there, it says, we, we see then that all the elders of Israel, they gathered to, to David at Hebron, and all the elders of Israel came to David, and they made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Samuel. Okay? So now that took place after Saul uh, died. Saul died in chapter 10, verse 13. So do, it says, so Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. 
and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Amen. So David had to have these powerful men in his army. They were mighty men. And I, I thought about that, and as I think about that, I thought, well, you know, today we're supposed to have some mighty men in our military. We have, have the one group, you know, that uh, the, the Marines and all this different stuff and all these different people that's in the military, and some of them get more training than others because they're supposed to be qualified to do certain things that just the regular soldier is not. So I thought to myself, well, would we call any of them mighty men? Mighty men today? I don't think we would because I think there was something special about these men that were considered mighty men. Because when they did things, God was with them. Amen. You see, God was with these men and they were all for a purpose to do what needed to be done for Israel. Hallelujah. And you think about that the, the people of Israel, the army of Israel, when, when Jesse sent David to check on his brothers, David had no idea what kind of situation he was going to walk into. And he goes there and what begins to happen? They're all talking and he hear, hears all of this and he's seeing that Israel's army, they are afraid and they run back and they're hiding themselves and so on. He wonders, well, what is going on? What is going on? And so then he hears the, the talk that Goliath is, is using. And so he begins to ask about this man and some of the other personnel there and soldiers began to tell David what was going on and who this was. But then David's elder brother, he got upset at David. Yeah. Made light of him. Made fun of him. But you know, as I was reading and studying for this, you know, David was not a teenager. A lot of people think David was a teenager, but David was at least 27 years old when this took place. If you do your homework and you study it, you'll find out. Possibly he could have been almost 28. So he was not a youth. He was not like a teenager. 27 years old. And so when he decided that they didn't have to put up with this. They didn't have to put up with a giant standing there and defying the armies of Israel. So David decides what he's going to do, and he begins to ask questions, which we would do if we were given something to do. We would begin to ask questions about it because we would want to know what's going on here. So David wanted to know what's going on here, and so they began to tell him. And so then he, somebody goes to uh, uh, Saul and tells him that there's this young man out here, and he's saying he wants to fight Goliath. Well, I'll tell you, Goliath was a big man. He was a big man. Hallelujah. And so David made up his mind that he was going to, to uh, fight this man. And so David and all Israel standing there and they're watching. And so they take David to Saul and Saul begins to question him. And so on. he still didn't know who he was, began to question him. And so forth. And David told him, well, you know, I want to fight. And I, he told him what he had done. He said, I've killed a bear. I've killed a lion. And he said, when the lion stole the sheep, and he said, I went after it and said, uh, took the sheep out of its mouth. And he said, then he turned on me. And when he did, he said, I held it by the beard and I slew it. Yeah. So if we if we would just think about that for a moment, that's not natural. So God was with David, even at that time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he slew the lion and he slew the bear. Yeah. So then Saul said, well, is thinking to himself, I can just imagine what Saul was saying. Hey, you know, well, here's a young man, and, and uh, he says he wants to fight the giant. So if he's done those things, I guess I ought to let him try. And so Saul decides he's going to put his armor on David. So David tries to walk in that armor. Well, he couldn't walk in that. He said, I can't fight in this. I've not proved it. Yeah. It was too big for him because Saul was a tall man, you see. And so David takes it off, and he does what he needs to do in order to fight this, this giant. He takes his little bag and puts in some stone, five stones in there, and he takes his sling. Yeah. And he takes his staff. And here he goes. And he hasn't been trying. No. He's not been trained. He's not, he's not a soldier to be in this type of, of situation. But you know what? He's got one at his side that is, hallelujah, the host of the army of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so David, without fear, when he goes out and here comes big Goliath and he starts his mouth, 
saying, you know, what are y'all sending me out here? You send me out here a dog to fight me, blah, 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 you know, and on and on. But David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? You see, he, David took it. He was defying the armies of God. And the armies of God was Israel. So David doesn't do a thing. He runs, begins to run toward Goliath. And then he begins to sling that sling. And of all places, it hit him right here where his armor didn't cover. And it sunk into his forehead and he fell down. Well, David didn't have a, a sword or anything. So he has to run up and climb up on top of Goliath and take his sword and cut his head off. So you see, David has proven himself that he is going to stand for God Amen. and he's not going to give any ground to the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. You just look at the Philistines as the devil because he was not going to give them any ground. They could not advance anymore against the, the armies of Israel at that time. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. So then when David... The people of Israel, they gather together and they go and they uh, anoint David and make him king. Now that Saul's dead, they make him king according to the, to the Lord by the hand of Samuel. Okay? Now, and David and all Israel, they went up to Jerusalem. At that time, it was called Jebus. Jebus, where the Jebusites were, the inhabitants of the land. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come hither. But nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David. Hallelujah. And David said, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. So Joab, this is another mighty man. Hallelujah. So Joab, the son of Zariah, went first up and was chief. And David dwelt in the castle at the city of David, the castle of Zion. And David dwelt there, therefore they called it the city of David because David was dwelling in the castle at Zion. And he built the city round about, even from Milo, and Joab repaired the rest of the city. Now you think about that. Here's one man. He's going to repair the rest of the city. Hallelujah. So Joab was one of those three mighty men that followed David. Hallelujah. And so... Then he goes on, when we get over to verse 11, we start reading about the other mighty men as well. And so, when David took that castle, David said, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites first would be chief, head, and captain. In other words, you had some that were captains, and you had some that were chief, but when you were made chief and captain, that put you over the others. Okay? Hallelujah. And so, let's go to verse 14 in that same chapter. And they set themselves in the midst of that parcel and delivered it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord saved them by a great deliverance. In the margin of the Bible, it says, by a great salvation. Hallelujah. Now, And they, it says they set, which means they stood themselves in the midst of that parcel of ground that was full of barley, and they delivered it, and they slew the Philistines, and the Lord saved them, Israel, by a great deliverance or by a great salvation. The scriptures go on to tell of other mighty men of David's army and their deeds. But I want to speak for just a few minutes about one of them, and that's Eleazar, who was of David's mighty men. Eleazar earned the distinction of a mighty man during this time as David's men confronted a Philistine army that had gathered together to battle Israel. The conflict moved to the plot of ground that was full of barley. So it was barley. It was the barley season. There many of the Israelites were afraid and they fled before the Philistines. But inspired by Eleazar's leadership, others stood their ground. And the tide was turned, and defeat was turned into a great victory. Why? Because these brave, mighty men acted in faith, and the Lord saved them. So I'm going to tell you today, brothers and sisters, you and I, we've started on a journey for this county. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, in order to do what 
we're wanting done, we're going to have to stand our ground. Amen. We're going to have to be willing not to give yes, up. Hallelujah. We're going to have to be willing not to faint. We're Amen. going to have to be willing to stay the course. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Until this thing is done that we're designed to see done in Brisbane County. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't give up. You no, amen. Up. You've got to stand your ground. If these mighty three mighty men had given up, you, they would have lost that battle. They would have lost the amen. field of army. Amen. But you yes. see, they stood together. Eleazar encouraged them, and they stood there together, and they they took the victory. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And if you and I want victory for present County, we've yes. got to stand on our ground. Hallelujah. Yes. We've got to stand on what the Word of God has told us amen. to do. Glory Hallelujah. to God. God. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Yes. Verses 14 through 18. Hallelujah. And says, once again, here is Syria. The heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Because you see, something was happening. Every time that the king of Syria was making a decision or deciding something or do this or do that, well, it was getting back and coming back to him and somebody they already knew about it over in Israel. So he couldn't pull a, a surprise siege or anything like that because things were going on. He couldn't understand. He thought he had a traitor in his midst. But one of his servants said in verse 12, says, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. So you see, let me tell you today, God has still got people today that he's using, and he sends them in the spirit <clears throat> into places, right into the presidential office. That's right. Yes. Amen. And they get to hear and see Amen. what's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. It's already happened many times, and these people have stood and told what the Lord would, how they would send that They wouldn't tell you what they saw and heard, though, many times, because they're not allowed to. Hallelujah. Because it, some of it could be secret stuff that the country doesn't even know about. Who knows? But I heard of one, and he told about going into the place, and he saw the traitor's hand right on the table. So you think that the president's office maybe carefully monitored or whatever. Yeah, it probably is. But there's traitors Amen. that also sit at the table. Yes. Glory to God. Traitors that sit at the table telling things, saying things, but they have no intention of doing those things because they're a traitor. Hallelujah. So you see, we've got to be aware. That's why people, what we believe, the word of God, we've got to stand our ground. Don't give up no matter what you hear, no matter what goes on. Don't give up. Amen. Stand on this word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And you see, so that says here, verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is. The king of Syria wants to know where, where he is. Hallelujah. And he says that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, send he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. So now this servant of the prophets, he, he sees all of this when he gets up that morning. He sees all of these horses and chariots compassing the city. So he, he gets a little fearful. Hallelujah. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he answered and he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha, I want you to notice, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes that he may see. Now, Elisha is asking the Lord to open the eyes of his servant that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. Look what he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. What did Elisha do? He prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. What did Elisha do? He prayed that they be, to be smote with blindness. And so that army that was compassing that city, the Syrian army, they were smote with blindness. Hallelujah. And it says, according to the word of Elisha. You see, brothers and sisters, our words have power. What you speak out of your mouth is either life or death. So our words have power. And it just goes to show you that as Elisha, whatever he prayed, that's what they got. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, we today can do the same thing. There's been times when I've prayed something, but I didn't voice it out. I just thought it as a thought in my mind, and it came to pass. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, he, he, he told me one day, he said, Chelsea, he said, you, and I was asking him about this, and I said, Lord, I didn't even pray that out loud. But he told me, he said, Chelsea, he said, I know even your very thoughts, remember. Amen. So you see, when, when, when you're talking to the Lord, you're not always voicing it out, but it's within your spirit and you're saying it. But the Lord hears it all. Because if he knows the very motives of our heart, he knows everything we're thinking and saying and speaking. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then Elisha prayed. And next it says in Elisha in verse 19. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. See, he's misleading these people. They're blind now. They can't really see him or whatever. And he says, Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, Open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Now here, Elisha is telling the king, no, don't smite them, but feed them. Feed them. And you see, the Lord tells us that, that when your enemy asks food, feed him. When he asks, when he's thirsty and he needs something to drink, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you do what? You heat coals of fire upon their heads. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. So you see how the Lord used Elisha here. Three different, just praying, simple words, and they came to pass. Hallelujah. And he prepared great, the king now prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. So you see, God was using his prophet there 
to take care of a situation, and all you know, I had to do was just pray. Just pray it out, what he was wanting God to do. Hallelujah. And people, it is that simple for you and me. We just pray it out, what we're desiring of God to do. Just pray it out. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, there's people sitting in here tonight, and you're going to have to start joining us in the prayer meeting on Friday night. The Lord was, the spirit of the Lord was just so beautiful and precious last night in our meeting. I'm telling you, it was really precious. It really was. Such a wonderful, wonderful presence of the Lord there. Hallelujah. I'll tell you. And I, I felt like that, that we need to, like we prayed last night for all of those at the, the mayor and the members of the city council. I believe we need to do that every time we meet. Hallelujah. There's a purpose for that. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. We need to pray for them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you see, when the enemy comes against us, what are we going to do? Because we know, don't you know, that when you start praying for God to, to move and to do something, that the enemy's going to come against you. Yeah. The enemy, when you start praying about something, the enemy will always sneak up with something other to come against you. Yeah, that's right. But let me tell you, that's Amen. one reason I'm saying this tonight. We've got to stand, people. Amen. And I'm going to tell you that, that we know that the enemy is sneaky and they can that he can come in and try to cause division, try to cause some kind of confusion or something. But let's just stay, keep standing, keep looking right straight ahead to Amen. Jesus, hallelujah, believing what we're standing for, that God is going to answer, Amen. and God is going to do a great and mighty work Amen. in this town. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Because you see, we as believers, we know that we're going to face situations that were similar to these that we've just read out of the scripture here. Hallelujah. And that will be both practical problems and spiritual attacks at one time or another. Because if we attempt to approach situations in our own strength, then we can become fearful. And God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we too can be tempted to run and assume defeat just like the, the armies of Israel. When they became fearful, they would run and hide from the enemy. But God doesn't want us to run and hide from the enemy. He wants us to face the enemy on his own territory. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. When he comes and tries to bring confusion, when he comes to try to bring strife or something, we need to meet him face to face. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we need to bind that confusion. Amen. Spirit. Yes. We need to bind that spirit of the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we Amen. Need to bind it. Amen. In Jesus' name. And Amen. not allow it to be Amen. in our lives. And not allow it to be in what we're doing for God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need to always ask the Lord. Lord, examine my heart. If there be any wicked way in me, any iniquity at all, Lord, take it right now. I give it to you and wash me and cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. For I want my heart to be pure and my hands clean before the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So we cannot approach... The enemy or any type of situation in a fearful attitude. Glory to God. We cannot face it in our own strength because we're not made to face it in our own strength. Our body would not stand up under some of the things that you would have to go through when you come against the enemy. We've got to face it in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So... Just like these Israelis in that army got fearful, you see, and they ran. We don't want to do that because they were encountering a, a huge army. They said that some of the chariots that they had back then was made of iron. So if you were to run in and one of those chariots had come towards you, you would probably have felt fearful too. But you see, today we cannot be fearful because the Lord... We know the Lord has already defeated the enemy. So if he's already defeated, we need to remind him that he's already a defeated foe. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, but the word tells us in 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch. Be alert. Ye stand firm or fast in the faith. Quit you like men or act like men and be strong. The Hebrew translation says it this way. You must constantly be watchful. You must steadily stand firm in the faith. 
You must habitually conduct yourselves in a courageous way. You must continually increase in strength. Amen. You see, we can be prepared.